It's Nicholas back again. Oh yeah, I'm on a roll. A sausage roll. No, not really. But here we have Zorin OS Lite 16.2. Was it 16.3? No, I think it's 16.2. Now the Lite version is meant for low power machines. But unfortunately, unlike back in the day when they meant low power machines, it's not so low powered now. You do need a medium style machine really to run it correctly and get videos running etc. But we're going to just run through it a bit with you, just in case you haven't thought of it. I mean, if you've got a mid-range, say an i3 or an i5 or a lower-end AMP, AMP, AMD Ryzen, it'd be ideal. Not a big deal. And it gives you that like, sort of Windows look and feel-ish, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go straight down to the menu, which is the big Z, and we're first going to go down to System. Okay. So here you'll see bulk rename disk usage, logs, etc, etc. But we're going to go straight to the tour, because we weren't always going down. So we're going to start the tour. So this is Welcome to Zorin OS 16.2. Bearing in mind the light version, so it's the smallest one. There are some paid versions. You don't have to do the paid version if you want all the apps. You've just got to spend a bit of time. Remember they say in Linux, it's not times in time, or it's in beer money. You've got to spend the time, so you can't have the beer. Okay, so we'll start the tour. Open the menu, which we just did. That was fantastically easy, wasn't it? Nice and easy. Next, choose your desktop look with Zorin appearance. And I'll go through that with you in a second. Now remember, because it's light, you don't get many options. If you go for the full-blown version, you get them all. Next again, speed up your virtual machine. So it knows I'm using a virtual machine, and so it's done all the extensions it needs for virtualization. So it's, that's why it's doing stuff okay. I could install guest editions if I wanted to, but this is only going to be a one-off video. I'm not going to make extra ones. I'm going to wait until they release another uh, Zorin OS. So that will be not too long now. And then we'll go through it with you then. Or you could just put in a, a real machine. You know, be easy, wouldn't it? Use the software to find the installed apps. So that basically means the software center. Very, very similar to Ubuntu and Mint one. Very, very similar. But you know all how it works now, don't you? It's really easy, really, really easy. It does stuff. Remember, you can still install stuff via command line if you want to. But as far as I know and remember, we get Flat Hub here as well. I'm not sure if we get App Image straight away. Yeah, you should be using App Image, no problem. Yeah, I don't see one the reason why not. And you can click there and learn about installing apps. We don't want to do that. And next, that's it. We hope you enjoy Zorin OS. Well, on this sort of machine, it's fine. Now, on, say, a 10 to 12 year old machine that's lacking in RAM and power it struggles especially in video okay now this is not the out of box experience because I've actually changed all the themes and everything and I'm going to go through that with you just quickly so if we go down and hit the menu button again we'll go to Zorin appearance and so you can have what we have here which are the icons on the bar or you can have there's an experience. So all it will do is open up the open programs in the bar. But we'll go back to that one. As in themes, I've gone for the dark theme, okay? I'll switch to the light theme and show you. Ah, too bright, I'm blinded. Go back to the dark, please, thank you. Didn't like that at all. Or there's a middle one here where you can set the times where it will change for you. But I'll just keep to the dark one. You can also change the accent colours if you really want to. I've just kept them at that. As for desktop, uh, mounted volumes we can have, but I can also add home, rubbish bin, and file system. Yeah, all right. And you can change the desktop size if you want to. Also, you can change all your fonts here too. So that's that bit out of the way. Okay. So it's nice and simple. There's not too much to the light version. When you get to the bigger versions, and thank you guys for keep sending me the full versions every time you release one. They are really, really nice to use. And last year, I didn't get to do any reviews on them because, yeah, I had a rest of night. Anyway, we get Windows App Support. Now, this one is a bit iffy, so I'll click on it for you. You're thinking, oh, what do we get? Well, actually, I'll wait for it to come up. This is all real time. I'm not editing this out for you. This is how long it takes. In the virtual machine, by the way. Two cores. It's actually play on Linux and why. Now, 
play on Linux it just doesn't work very well anymore. So I'm not sure if that actually works very well at all. I wouldn't actually go down that route, to be honest. But it's there if you want to give it a go. So don't knock them for that. I mean, when the boys first started, they were still at school. Remember that? It was a long time ago. A really long time ago. Okay, under Office. LibreOffice is a standard, but I've installed only Office. All right, there's a reason for this. Don't get me wrong, I love LibreOffice. It's fantastic. But if you have to work with Windows fonts and files all the time, this is probably a better bet for you. Yeah, this is the freebie version. There is a paid version as well, by the way. But if you want to be compatible with Microsoft Word, this is one way to get out. Yeah, it'll get all your stuff done. You don't have to go over and change everything. So that's another good thing. I did download Chrome, but it's gone from my bar now. So if I go down to Internet, Chrome is there. So that's no problem. I'll just click on it and make sure it's, it's actually installed correctly. It should be. I installed it from the Chrome site. Yeah, it works fine. So it does work. Firefox is standard here, as you would imagine. Under multimedia. Now remember, this is the light version. You don't get a lot with it. It's a very, well, I wouldn't say a very small download. It's small for today's standards. So you get XF Burn, Sound Recorder, Rhythm Box, Parole and Cheese. Uh, Cheese is still a really good program. Rhythm Box, meh. I'll take it, I'll leave it. Next, we'll go to back. Graphics, Gimpage is a standard. You get your document viewer, your document scanner. So as soon as you put your printer on, it'll do all this stuff. Gimpage is, I imagine, a snap. But they're working quite fast now. So yeah, that'll work super fine. And finally, as we're near the end, accessories. It's just as usual. It's a really, really stripped back version of Ubuntu. More like a Lubuntu, I would say, but a bit more polished. So if you don't mind this sort of thing, and you just want something basic, it's ideal. It will continue to work. It's Ubuntu backed, so that's fine. The boys are working on it. If you really, 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 really like it, just go and give them a couple of shekels for the big one. Or get the biggest one you can that's free, then add all the extras yourself. But on the whole, if you've got a reasonable system to run it, it's fine. If you've got an old lepi with an older CPU and not much memory, it's just going to struggle. Okay, As a lot of distros, 64 bits will nowadays. So yeah, that's that. Sorry in 16.2. 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit. Sneaky looks out. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.